What's happening, everybody? Welcome to the live stream. Hope everybody's having a good Monday. Hope you're enjoying the holiday. I uh, just want to give a big thank you to all the fallen heroes, uh, you know, not celebrating, uh, uh, in, in honor of Memorial Day. Uh, so, today we're going to turn up the Myoporum, I think it's called Myoporum, I don't know how to say that, but that pen, uh, one, one of those blanks, and that was kind of that wormy wood that we cast a while ago. Uh, so, I'm pretty excited. I'm going to turn up the, the, the glow-in-the-dark blank. So, pretty cool. Let's see, I actually forgot to bring it over here. Let me go grab it, kind of show it to you. This camera probably won't focus on what it is, but you can kind of see what's happening there a little bit. Pretty cool looking. So I'm gonna go with, uh, I pulled a kit out. I had one, it's called Junior Morgan. Um, it's a fountain pen kit. So uh, I, you guys know that I like doing, if I'm doing two piece pens, I, I really like the Junior series because it's the same drill bits and all that stuff, but you get kind of different looks from each of the different kits. So I, I had that, I don't think I've ever turned one of those. Uh, and it should be kind of cool as a fountain pen. So a couple of notes about what I did. So pre uh, in preparing these blanks, they're going to be pretty see-through, so I painted the inside of the, the blank itself black, and then I used black tubes as well, so we shouldn't see anything through there. Uh, another reason I did that is we added some of the, I want to say, let's see here, I guess all we did was, oh, no, we, I think we added color shift powder, so having a darker background may help that kind of pop out, uh, so just figured let's go black and you know it'll be a lot better we won't have to see any glue splotches or any of that junk one other thing i want to mention uh i find it's so funny uh you guys know that i it's no secret I, i'm always learning things as i go i'm no i'm definitely no expert at a lot of this stuff <laughs> I have, I finally used some uh, brad point bits to drill these blanks. Oh my God. If you guys have, so one, the problem with these things is they're kind of diagonal and, and every time, I, if I just use a twist bit, I mean the bit just wanders all over the place. And <laughs> finally, I bought these uh, a little while ago uh, from Craft Supplies USA, I think is where I picked them up. They're the Fuller brand. The, Fuller is a pretty good dr uh, drill bit brand. Um, but man, these things tracked perfectly. These were the best drilling bits ever. So if you're doing something that has weird, uh, you don't really need that for, for just ac acrylic blanks necessarily. I, I usually don't have any problems using twist bits, uh, your standard drill bits for just, you know, alumilite blanks. But if you have wood and other stuff and it's all going kind of different directions, your bit will wander usually, but with a brad point bit, it seems like that works pretty well. I think the reason that I never really got into using brad point bits was I had some and I tried it a long time ago and I think the, the bits were just dull and they were like brand new. And I just said, oh, you know, I'm not going to mess with this anymore. Uh, but, the, but if you get some good brad point bits, they work really well. So I just wanted to kind of mention that it, it worked out pretty good. So on Friday we made, we were, we were playing around with those spin gems, the kind of granite looking stuff. And so uh, if you didn't see the, the other live stream, you can see some of these blanks have some, I, I call it blushing. It's kind of a white haziness on the outsides. Um, so I actually have chucked up on the lathe before we get going on the pen today. Uh, I actually have one chucked up. It's kind of bright over there, but um, it's, it's ready to go. And what I want to do is just uh, take down the, the, that kind of outside surface, you know, oops, wrong one. Take down the outside surface, turn it down a little bit and just kind of see what it looks like underneath. Um, one thing that I found after I uh, cut these is I was saying that we used Tuscan Green, I think was the name of the, the Spin Gems stuff that we used. And there actually are green things on the inside. So I think once we take this surface off, I think these things are going to look good, the, the, the Tuscan Green. Uh, but the other ones, so I finally got the other ones cut up. Uh, here are a couple, let's see, where, where did the other one go? Huh. I had... Uh, I thought I had three of these, but <laughs> I don't know what happened. Uh, but man, I mean, it, it, these things are looking really good. Let me let me let me see if I can get this thing to focus better. Um, looks like, I mean, solid surface countertop. And then this one is kind of funky. These these guys. So I'll be turning some of these guys up. I want to see how they work. One note about this stuff. Uh, it seemed like this stuff was really abrasive when I cut it. Uh, it's, it's pretty much seemed to, I don't know if my blade was already like on its last leg 
or what. I was just using my table saw, but it was pretty much dead after I cut these things up. So a uh, little bit uh, abrasive material. I don't exactly know what it is. Um, that might be one good reason to use the, the, the tubes instead, even though I was saying that you can kind of run into some issues here and there. Um, it might not be a bad idea. And one thing that I'm going to look into, Fred Wisson sells, um, he sells pen molds, like, you know, blank molds. Let's see, where are, I'm going to show you one. He sells these uh, silicone molds. And what I was thinking is he also sells extended ones. I think they're like eight inch. And I think I'm going to pick one of those up and see how those work. For, for this type of thing. That way you don't even have to use stoner on the outside. Um, I was mentioning that I really sprayed the heck out of the, the PVC and I think that's what caused this blushing on the outside. It just, it kind of clumped up that, I've, I've seen that happen before. Um, so I'm gonna try and, oh, we got, we got things going off here. What's going on? Shush. Um, I'm gonna try that out and see, cause I think that would be easier that, then I don't really have to cut a whole lot off uh, and, and kind of kill blades. That's one thing that I, I'm really trying to stay away from. I don't really like, if, if, if blanks are super abrasive and you're, you're pretty much gonna go through a saw blade to cut them, it's just not worth selling them. Um, I just, I don't like that. So just wanted to kind of mention that. We'll, we'll have to see how they work. You know, I'm gonna use carbide on, on, on that thing when I turn it, but anyway, lots of things going on. So uh, let me scroll up a little bit, see who's here. Dominic's here. Of course, Doug, welcome. And Mike McEwen. And Mert is here. And let's see here, who else? Uh, Paul's here, nice. Lots of people, Silver Lady. Joel's here, what's up? Chris, nice. Billy's here. And who else? Is Jen here? I think I, th I thought I saw Jen somewhere. Uh, somewhere way up there. I, I, yeah, there's Jen. Lots of people. And then if we scroll down. Oh, I love the pear guy. Thanks, Anna. I appreciate it. The pear guy is the best. <laughs> uh, who else? Dave's here. And Steve. Nice. Soot's crafting. What's up, Curtis? Nice. Yeah, the blade murderer. I'm... Uh, I really don't like that because especially right now I've, I've been I have a stack of blades uh, that, that need to be sharpened and I just I don't even want to go to Reno because there's like way more incidents of, of the <laughs> stuff going on the, the outbreak up in Reno. I'm trying to stay down here in, in you know my little town. So eventually I'm gonna have to take all my blades and I ended up actually just buying two more but I don't like that you know there's a few things that are like that that just kill a blade and it just, a lot of stabilized stuff can be like that. Um, man, that, that uh, hemp wood, oh, that stuff was murder on blades too. So let's uh, switch to the turning view, get going here. Uh, that's not really the greatest shot. What is it, what is the deal with this camera? And I looked back at our, at the, at the playback and I was thinking that maybe the, the screen looked better. There's still, I think the problem is this camera is just, it's a $300 camera. So I think we're just going to get a little bit of fuzziness. There may be something weird with my setup. I don't know, but uh, maybe we can figure something out and get a closer picture. But the problem is this one's got zoom and I want my zoom, you know. All right. So I just have this chucked up. I, I cut a 60 degree in the back so that my, my tail uh, uh, live center will hold it in place so and i'm going to get my dust collection up here that's close enough i think let's give this thing a whirl i'm going to turn the fan on behind me too to kind of blow the stuff the opposite direction turn on our thing uh, there we go I'm really digging the, the shear cutting action with these things. All right, so we're taking off the surface here. It does feel a little bit harder than normal blanks. 
but it's cutting just fine. I'm gonna give, get you guys in here a little bit closer, straight on on this thing. So I've, I've surfaced it up now, I've taken the surface off. And I think what I'm gonna do, let's just do a little bit of sanding here and, uh, and see, if, uh, see what it looks like. Cause now it's looking kind of dull all the way across compared to this. This is gonna look good because it was, it was the pipe was the outside edge. So it's gonna look a little bit more polished. So let's just sand this up a little bit and just kind of see See what this one looks like a little bit. I, it just, it, it, it came out of the, the pipes and they just don't look very good. And I don't think that's very indicative of what, <laughs> what, what to expect with these things. So let me turn the thing back on. We'll do a little bit of sanding here. I think I'm gonna start a little bit low. We'll hit it with some 180. Oh, I need to turn my phone on so I can see what you guys are saying in the chat. We'll just do a little bit of quick polishing here. Try and see what the, this surface will look like once we've cleaned it up a little bit. I'm, I'm excited to turn the turn a couple of them, you know, see what they look like. I think they're gonna make some really cool looking pens. And you could use this for anything. I mean, you know, this would be a really killer looking bowl. <laughs> That's for sure. You'd have to use a lot of spin gems, but maybe a small bowl. Pretty cool bottle stopper as well. So you're probably gonna have, you know, you might have a few little kind of pits and things. I'm not even gonna worry about messing with, you know, filling it or anything. I would probably, for the, it's probably best to, it, it may not be as bad on the inside, if you, you know, once you turn it down. There may be a few little, pinholes here and there. You just never know. All right, so we got 180. Uh, let's see here. We'll go to 220, 240. You guys seeing what I'm seeing? Still looking dull. Kind of quickly do this. The 220 grit, and actually, you know what I think I'm going to do is just we'll we'll go to 400, and I'm just going to put a little bit of CA on it. That'll kind of speed up the process. I think you can just polish it. You know, I don't think you need to put a finish on, but that'll make it shine up quicker. And I don't have to do as good a. I don't want to make this a, the sanding show. Two forty, four hundred. Let's see here. Where's my four hundred? That's six hundred. Here's a four hundred. hit it with a little bit of denatured alcohol here just to kind of clean off any extra dust that we got yeah that's already looking pretty good all right so let's just uh, apply a little bit of CA see what's up see what's happening with this thing scissors 
So what's everybody up to today? I still need to get my phone out. So I can see the see the chat, see what's going on in there. Just letting that kind of soak in a little bit on that first one. <laughs> True stone. <laughs> yeah. I've heard. I haven't actually tried that yet. But I can't really make true stone. I don't think so. Probably not going to try it. I like doing things myself. All right. How do I mute? There we go. What's up, Philip? How's it going, man? Uh, yeah, liquid diamonds is. It, Liquid diamonds turns like most epoxies. Uh, Alumilite is a little, I like it the best. I just, I think it turns the best. Um, I find epoxies to be a little bit more stringy, typically. Um, but I mean, really, they turn the same. It, it's, there's not that big of a difference. It's, it's kind of very subtle. Um, but I, I personally, I just kind of prefer Alumilite a little bit better. Uh, I find that epoxy, and, and I, I don't know, I've only used a few brands, you know, <laughs> but um, I find a lot of the epoxies, the shavings are like a, a little bit more staticky than Alumilite, a little bit kind of stringier, but they turn fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They're all pretty good. The one that usually gets a kind of a bad rap is polyester resin, and it's just that resin is inherently more brittle. It's part of the, like the characteristics of it. I'm not even gonna mess around with like polishing this up. This is good enough. Let's get you guys in here. I mean, that's pretty wicked right there. That looks, I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> that looks like that looks like stone. I mean, that's that looks like a counter. So, and you can see there's the, that Tuscan green. There's, there's little, some green chunks in there. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention uh, about this stuff. So I noticed in the, the square blanks, I, th I think I, I, I guess I kind of mentioned it, but it seemed like the bigger chunks in these sort of went down. Oh, that's way close. Sort of kind of sunk. Like I was, I was a little bit worried about, I mean, they're up there here and there, but there's a lot more in the bottom of this, because I think this was the top side. You know, you can kind of see a difference there. Same with this one. And so I actually think that that is the one thing about vertical pouring. You'll probably get a little bit more of a mixture. It, it won't tend to settle to the bottom as much. So I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to kind of test, do a little bit more testing with these things, but you know, this speaks for itself, I think. I, I, I think that that's a, a nice looking um, approximation of granite right there. <clears throat> so, what do you guys think? Yeah, PR is, and it smells, you know, that, it smells when you're using it. It smells horrible when it's liquid form. And then it still smells when you're turning it. <laughs> and it's brittle. And so, I don't know more pink. Yeah, there is a little bit of kind of that like yeah, it's it's really kind of more like a salmon. But there there's quite a bit of green as well. It, I don't know about the Tuscan green. That's that's not the most uh, explanatory name for that. So Yeah, sorry about that, Philip. I've been pretty busy the last few days. Uh, let's see here. Same color as the kitchen counter. I know it's it's pretty cool. So yeah, you can just just search uh, for. I don't have her her information offhand. I have it. I, I'm pretty sure I posted it on Instagram though. How's my carbide tip? It didn't blunt it. I don't think it was fine. I don't know. It's kind of hard to <laughs> to tell really. All right, so there's a good uh, example. I just wanted to kind of, 
like I said, it, even though the outside of this looked a little bit kind of funky, it's really not, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, just on the surface. Might help to get my tail stuck out of the way. Just on the surface. So let me, let me get behind the camera here with my thing. So that's what it was looking like. We had that, these white spots, but all I did was just kind of take the surface down a little bit. And uh, these things look great, so I'm, I'm anxious to, to play around a little bit more. All right, so let's switch the lathe over. I'm gonna zoom you guys back out. Okay, you are zoomed out. You know what I need? You know what I need, guys? I need my chuck removal tool from Doug. Where'd it go? Where'd I put it? Huh. I just, I swear I just had it. Oh, it's in my ch chuck drawer. I put it in the chuck drawer. Check this out. See if it works on this one. Where's my... It's a little bit different on this Barracuda chuck, but I think it's gonna work. Oh, oh it doesn't work on the Barracuda too well. Oh, it's because it's got a gigantic hole in there. Sorry, Doug. Maybe I can do it like this. Ah, you can use the other end in the jaws if, if it doesn't fit the chuck. It works great with the easy chuck. It's not meant for cheap junk chucks, I guess. <clears throat> that was a horrible promotion. Sorry, Doug. I ruined it. All right, so now we're going to switch over to my between centers center thing and all right so one little quick note where'd my where'd the blanks go show you a little trick that i do most of you guys probably know this one but oh shoot where'd my sharpie go oh man there it is all right so Here's my blank. Let, let me find where my marks are here. So I marked the outside with a little bit of a carpenter's triangle thing, I think they call it. So what I'm going to do, this is how it's lined up. Now, I don't know that it's really going to make any difference in the end, but how it looks, but I'd like to mark this. The problem is the outside of the blank is going to get turned away. So I just break these things, pop them open. So again, like, a, like it's on a hinge. And then what I do is I put a mark, let's see, make sure I'm on camera. I put a mark on each side here. Since I'm right-handed, I like to just flip them over. And then now those two marks will line up. Uh, and, and I got something on the inside to line my pen blanks up when I'm assembling the pen. So it's just a little bit of a trick to kind of help you, you know, make sure everything's where it should be when you're putting your pen together. All right, so we got our, oh, I almost lost my bushing. Let's start with the cap. Let's start with the cap here. So this is a, a Junior Morgan. I have no clue where I got it. I just found it in my drawer. So let's get this guy up in here. Junior Morgan. And let's see what we can do here. I'm going to try, hold on, guys. <laughs> I'm going to try and... The camera legs. Let's see what what this view is like. What do you guys think about this? Is it kind of crooked. Tell me what you think about this. All right. I lost. No, I didn't lose it. I, I actually put it in the right place. Yeah, I don't really like the Barracuda Chuck. I think it's kind of junk, but it's fine. I mean, it works, but compared to an easy Chuck, no way. Do I think it... I To be honest, I've never turned Corian, I don't think so. I would say... I have cut it though, and I would say that it's probably exactly the same. Um, 
I, I would think that it's going to be pretty much the same exact deal as, as Corian. But like I said, I haven't actually, I don't think I've actually turned a Corian blank. Like I said, I, I don't, I, I turn my own things. <laughs> usually, I don't really turn other blanks usually. It's actually one of the things, you know, I, I was, I was a pretty, pretty strict, um, like it had to be made out of wood when I first got started into turning. I wasn't a big fan of, uh, you know, acrylics and all that kind of stuff, but uh, I'm just going to put my bushings on this other one now so that I can just pick it up and go when I'm ready. Make sure that I have them. Uh, the junior kit is simple. Uh, these two on, on the cap are the same exact size. And then on the, the pen body, the bigger one is the tip. The other one's going to be the end. So just a couple notes. Yeah, I think, I think it turns about the same. It's, it's kind of a nice hard, hard material, you know. Hey, what's up, Paul? How's it going? Okay, so let's turn this up. So this was given to me, this myoporum, uh, was given to me by Rudy at the SoCal Pen Turners Gathering, and it, it was just, you know, clear. clear. Uh, I dyed it and all that stuff and stabilized it. Uh, but I think that he was pulling it out of places. I think they planted it. I don't know where it's native to, but it was growing in Southern California in the L.A. area, and I think that he was pulling it out of you know somewhere he, he was ripping it up so he gave me a little chunk of it it's really cool it's like that wormy wood kind of i don't exactly know what species but you know got all those little channels in it and it was pretty cool looking all right so let's turn the, the doohickey on I'm really digging the angled turning or the, you know, the, the shear cutting with the carbide tools. I think I need a new, I think I might need a new uh, CI3 here, but once we get it turned down, it's a lot easier to, to knock down the corners if you use it on a shear angle. I think I might be a little high. One thing that I noticed is I tend to be a little bit too high when I'm shear cutting uh, because I, I'm able to drop the handle down more like a, a cutting tool, like a gouge more. And you really want to be kind of coming in around the middle still. Let's get a little tighter here. Let's get that thing tightened up. Looking pretty good. What do you guys think about the angle? Camera angle. I think, I think this is going to look good, guys. I'm going to move you guys over the... Oh, man. Hold on. I got cords dangling. and It's getting crazy in here. Let's get you guys kind of a normal, straight-on shot here of this thing. Down a little bit. There we go. Look at that looking pretty good, I, I think. Oop. 
And uh, so there's glow-in-the-dark powder in there. So I think this is going to be pretty cool looking. I'll scoot you guys kind of right. Oh, sorry. Very exciting. Right there. I'm going to get you guys right. How about there? See what's happening. The angle is all right. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I like that. Cutter angle nervous. I'm telling you guys, it is awesome. I really, if you haven't tried cutting on a sheer angle, I like it. Um, let me, let me, let me scoot it back a little bit. And I don't know that I do this on every type of thing. I, I usually do, you know, just turn, when I'm using carbide, usually just do it like a, you know, straight on. Let's see if this shows. The, the, night, the thing I like about this is I've never really loved, you know, holding the tool 90 degrees. It's, it's a little bit less comfortable than just kind of grabbing it. And, and I have more control. I'm more used to this action. And so, I mean, I guess you could just come in and, you know, do it flat, but I really like the shear cut. I was talking to Chad about it the other day. Uh, yesterday I called him and he was like, oh, I love doing the shear angle, especially when you're knocking the corners down. I guess his, the way Chad does it, even on like pens and stuff, he said that he uses the, he just pulls out the square, like the, and I don't have one, but like the big square one, like the biggest tool handle, the CI-1 or something like that. And he'll take the, the square cutter and do that, which kind of made sense. It was interesting. I'll have to try that sometime. <laughs> but I've been kind of playing around with this for a little bit with the shear cut thing, and I'm, I'm kind of digging it. I used to always get catches when I, I've tried it a couple times with the regular cutters and I would always get catches and that's why I, I would always just, you know, do it, do it flat. But I've been kind of playing with it. Tried it the first time the other day and I've been getting pretty good results. One of the things that I always struggle with on pins with carbide cutters, <clears throat> I put a lot of camber on most of my blanks. I don't do straight across. And so it's always hard to get, you know, the nibble away when, when, the, when the blank is angling down at that thing. It's hard to get in there and get everything lined up on the bushings. But if you come in on a sheer angle, it's much easier to kind of get a little bit more control. I'm not saying you should try it necessarily. If you get good results and aren't comfortable, then don't do it. But if you ever thought that it wasn't possible, I'm here to tell you it is very possible and it's it's worth trying out if you're interested. Yeah, I used to pull out a, a, a <clears throat> spindle gouge a lot of times. I would pull my spindle gouge out and, and just kind of come in on it and just kind of nibble it away, but kind of not really, don't really see a big reason to anymore. You can get in there with the, you can get in there with a the carbide. The other thing about it is the advantage, like I said, I kind of like the, I like holding the tool that way, but um, I'm getting them so smooth that I'm starting, I mean, I, I was turning my blanks, the team color ones. Um, I was doing some tests with, with my lion's blank. And I mean, I, I, these are soft. This is the, the, the softer Alumalite white. 
But I mean, I would have it so smooth that all I would all I would do is pull out the zona paper and polish. And actually, I had one of the regular Lumilite clear blanks. Same thing. I'm just having fun here. So one of the things about this myoporum stuff, let's see if, I don't know if this angle will get you guys close. Yeah, it should be, should be okay. There are gonna, there's gonna be a few, you know, pits and things. There's just areas that are like on the inside where resin couldn't really get to. So there, there's gonna be a couple of those that I might have to fill. Uh, if I'm lucky, maybe I'll turn most of them away, you know, um, but that's just, I don't know any other way to, to handle that, to deal with it. Maybe, maybe a slower setting resin, you know, might have had more time to kind of work its way in through some of the cracks and crevices on the inside, maybe. But if there's like a hole that really isn't ac accessible, then there's really nothing you can do. It doesn't matter what resin you use or how long it's gonna stay liquid. Try and get the camera in a little bit closer for this shot. Me working on the. Hold on, guys. Things are just crazy right now. Let's see how I can do this. There we go. That ought to be pretty good, maybe. Let's see how that works. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, radius. I mean, all all of them pretty much. I, I don't think that I would. Pro I probably wouldn't recommend messing with the detailers on a, on an angle like that. That's probably going to lead to serious problems. Don't think I, I don't think I would do that. I, I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> you know. Um, but I don't. I'd stay away from it. But the R2, R2 D2. Um, I tried it with this one. I actually like the round one a little bit better. Um, I was talking to Chad though. Chad turns his pins pretty much with an R2, I think. The whole thing, start to finish. So, I mean, it, it just, like I said, it's up to you. All of this stuff, there's no better way to do things unless it's better for you. Whichever way works best. Uh, but I think that, um, I think it's something that you can look into. Uh, I don't know, Chad, now Chad was saying that he never had a problem using uh, the, the standard cutters on, on an angle. I did. <laughs> Every time I did that, I would get weird catches and things and I had problems with it, but I may have been doing it wrong. You know, I may have been approaching the wood wrong or, you know, something. So, um, but I, I've been playing with the, the, the negative rake ones and man, I mean, it, I haven't, I've done some stuff that should have gotten a catch <laughs> and it, I haven't been able to get one yet. So I feel pretty comfortable. Uh, yeah, I totally stabilized this, die stabilized it. 
I mean, I, I, I usually stabilize. If it's wood, most likely, 99% of the time, it's gonna be stabilized. Let's zoom you guys out a little bit. That's a little bit kind of crazy. Yeah, this 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 ought to work good. I like I like that angle. Now, I do want to make one thing clear about this. Part of the reason that I've been able to get smoother blanks, I don't know that it really has anything to do with the angle necessarily. It's more that I just have more control, I feel, the, the way that I'm holding the, the tool. So it's just something, you know, something to think about. You might try it, if, if you, especially for the folks that are used to gouges, if that's your, the, the way you normally you know, hold a lot of your tools. I think a lot of you guys might find this a lot easier than trying to hold it flat. Let's see what it's looking like. Got a few tool marks and I wasn't able to get rid of that. If I, if I came down a little bit thinner, I think I'm gonna try to take some of that out. That's pretty deep. <clears throat> that way I don't have to fill as much. So we'll put a little less camber. The, the shape is still a little wonky. I'm kind of fat right in this area. Let's give it, a, let's keep it going here. Where are we at here? Where are we at here? Gotta get in here, get a good stance. The problem is the camera's kind of right where I stand a lot of times when I'm doing a kind of a pole cut. <laughs> That's okay. I'll figure it out. I'm versatile. Yeah, I know a lot of people are like, is denatured alcohol the same as, you know, methylated spirits? And I'm like, I don't know. What is that? <laughs> I've never heard of it. Dang, that's still there. Darn pit. Probably gonna have to fill it. I don't think I can get rid of it completely, but.
All right, I think that's probably as good as I'm gonna get it. Let's take a peek here. Still got those two guys. So I'm gonna pull out, those things are pretty deep. Uh, you know, you, technically something this big, you could pull out epoxy, five minute epoxy. Um, I'm, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna kind of, we're gonna use CA, but we're gonna kind of put it in stages. You don't really want to put a big glob of it necessarily to try to fill the whole thing. But that's not what I'm trying to do anyway. I'm going to just kind of keep adding thin layers and then hitting it with accelerator. And another thing that I like to do when I'm messing around with CA glue is I actually use a little poker. That way I can kind of Smooth this stuff around, make sure there's not like a big air bubble. And I'm using the, the gel style, it's just the like Loctite, whatever, Home Depot hats. Just want to kind of, like I said, thin layers. And we're going to put a few of them on, and then I'll hit it with the activator. <clears throat> Let that dry for a minute. I really need to get my dust collector out of here the actual dust collector itself because it's so loud although I guess it's kind of going to be loud at, at the hole too where it's sucking the air in I don't know it's really annoying I'm just going to try and kind of wipe this off a little bit uh, once you hit it with activator the next thing that you put on there is going to probably cure up like right away just kind of a little bit of a warning poker tool. Yeah, see that kind of hardened right away. So let me just put one more little one more round on here and just kind of fill. There's a little couple little pits that I saw. The I like the gel because it gives you a really long working time. I think thick would be the same way to go. So we'll just kind of let that sit there. But those are the only two pits that we have, have to worry about. Everything else is nice and nice and filled up there. So let me see if I can slightly adjust this camera. Hmm. To give you about the same angle, but get the camera a little bit out of my way there that ought to be pretty good what do you guys think about that let me center everything there we go all right <clears throat> Some curly, yeah, I don't know. There's there's all kinds of stuff. A little bit of curl right there, yeah. That stuff, it was like root, uh, I, w I would say. It's, it's more like a root ball. So, it's looking good though. All right, so let's shave that off and let's see what we did. definitely filled up there that one I'm just gonna take a, another pass real quick looks like it's still slightly below the surface <clears throat> I'm gonna 
I'm gonna add just a tiny, tiny bit more on here. It looks like it's a little low right there. Nope, I think we, I think we might have cured some on the tip of this thing. That's another thing that can happen when you're, if you hit it with activator and then you're kind of shoving the tip around, it's gonna, could, could activate the tip and cure it up. All right, so this ought to, I think that ought to get us where we want to be. All right, what do we got here? Still a little bit. Let me let me take another pass with the tool. I think I can get this thing leveled up. Just a little tiny pit. Just doesn't want to work with me. Come on now. Okay. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of sanding. I'm gonna start at 240, I think. Just gonna dry sand this real quick to start. Uh, I don't know that I got an amazingly flat surface on this. It looks like there's a few tool marks, possibly. So I'm just gonna kind of take those out real quick and then, oh, then we'll move up through the grits. That's too fast. Yeah, what do you guys see in there? So let me zoom in just a little bit more. Yeah, not too bad, but you can definitely see a few tool marks in there. kind of deep tool marks. I think I'm going to try and see if I can just take those out with the tool. Let's see if I helped anything or made it worse. The myoporum might be kind of hard. Yeah, it looks like it's getting better. Might have been smarter just to start sanding at 180. In fact, I think I'm gonna do that. 
All else fails, drop down a grit, and it usually goes a little bit faster for you. Just have to find a 180. Just cut a new one. <clears throat> All right, got everything smoothed out now. Let's move back up. First, we'll stop it a little bit here and zoom you guys in so you can kind of see what we're looking at. It's really gonna be cool. I, once we polish this up, I think it's gonna really, really pop out at us. So we'll sand it up to about 600, and then we'll put a few coats of CA on top, and I think it's gonna look pretty good. But I'm really anxious to see what it looks like with the like glow-in-the-dark part, you know? So we might have to turn the lights out, see what this thing looks like. Julie's here, what's up? All right, and I got a little bit of 600 grit here somewhere. Okay. I think I'll hit it with some denatured alcohol just to kind of wipe everything off of there dust that might still be on it. And this ought to give you guys a good view of what it's starting to look like here. Yeah, I think this is going to be good. I think this is going to be a good one. Do I not care for micro mesh finishes? I don't like micro mesh personally, uh, that brand. I like the, uh, I, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, I don't like the pads. Um, but in this case, it's going to look a lot better putting CA on it, like an actual finish. You can polish something up like this and I've done, and I do it a lot of times, but the wood's going to be a slightly different sheen than the resin. So, and I don't, I don't want that. So CA finish is what I'm going to go for on this one. Okay. So let me get some stuff out of the way. Let's get a piece of uh, piece of paper towel and we'll put some CA on yeah so my typically I'll, I'll wet sand up to 600 and then I'll, I'll switch to the Zona papers um, it's it's basically the same same exact thing 
as, as micro mesh. Oh, that's way zoomed in. It's the same thing, but I like the thin papers and I like the color coded and I like that it's cheaper <laughs> than micro mesh. Um, that's a 3M made product. So it works exactly the same, but I've never really been a fan of micro meshing to the like nth degree. I don't go through every step of it. Um, I don't really think that I, I prefer buffing wheels as those kind of higher, higher steps. I just get more consistent results that way. But I mean, it works fine. I know a lot of people that swear by, you know, micro mesh or whatever, but. I usually find scratches and stuff where the buffing wheels that the buffing wheels would take out. Oh man, this thing's looking good already. I can tell. Woo! Oh man, yes. The uh, the color shift powder is popping out now too. Let me get you guys in front of this thing. This way. Let's see what that looks like. Look at that. What? I wasn't sure how the color shift powder was going to look in this. Uh, we used uh, ocean blue dye. Oh. It's looking good. All right, so let's move you guys back. Sorry about this. Back and forth, back and forth. There. And we'll get a little accelerator going. I usually let the first coat of a CA finish just kind of soak in and, and cure on its own. And once that first one's good, then I just go ahead and use accelerator. Um, I think I'm in a really dry area. And so some accelerators may be a little bit too much if you're in a humid area. I think that that might be a difference. So just kind of watch, watch the accelerator depending on where you're at. But I haven't really had any problems with mercury accelerator. It, it seems to be a little bit less aggressive. I think you can make the accelerator formula, you know, more or less aggressive. <clears throat> yeah, that's going to look pretty good, I think, guys. I think I'll put one more coat on and I'm going to try and just get away with like four, whatever, however many we did, four coats. We'll see. It depends on how many ridges we have in this on the surface. But um, for the most part, the surface was nice and smooth. If you're starting with a, a nice smooth surface on your blank, there's not like pits and dips and stuff, then you don't necessarily need to put a ton of CA finish on but you need to put enough so that you can kind of sand it smooth and not burn through. Mercury is poisonous. <laughs> not this stuff. That actually I think is gonna look, I think, I think I got that on pretty smooth too. Let's do a little bit of sanding here. What are you guys seeing? Yeah, that's a good view. Yeah, that's, I don't have major, massive ridges, I don't think. It's stopping. Yeah, there's a few. We'll do the, we'll do the eight coat method. I usually do four, sand, sand it flat, and then do four more. Well... That's looking pretty good. I'll, I'll just put a couple, two or three on after this.
All right. Let me wipe that thing down. All right, so let's put, like I said, two or three more coats on here. And I'm using Mercury Thin Flex. It's the one that I really like to use for, for finishes. And the, the main reason is it, it looks good in the end. Uh, there's not a lot of difference, I don't think, between most of the CAs, but some of them do seem to be a little bit clearer. I don't, I don't know. I mean, this, again, this is, there's no proof or anything. It's just kind of based on what I've seen with my own eyes. Um, I like the way that it looks, I guess. And then the main thing, though, is it go, the, the, the viscosity of it. I can just apply it pretty, pretty easily. I get it on really smooth. So that's the main thing for me. I don't really care. <laughs> it doesn't really matter as long as I can get it on, you know, smoothly. That's what I look for personally in, in CAs and, and as long as it looks good. All right. So one more here. And some, you know, some viscosities and some working, it also depends on the working time, how, how long it's kind of open. Some of them are, are too fast or too slow or too thick, and it just, I can't get it on as, as easy. So I don't use those. There we go. So I'm going to move right into, I just use, I use 400 grit to kind of knock everything down and get it, get the majority of those like ridges out. Then I'm just going to switch straight to the polishing paper. So I, you know, I'm still going to do a, you know, micro mesh finish, I guess, in a sense, it's just going to be on the, the actual CA itself. And I need, uh, you guys tell me, do I need new water? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I'm going to go dump this out, get some fresh water, because that's just nasty. And it's really not that big of a deal. It's just sanding sludge, but material coming off of the blanks. But let's go for clear. Much better. Here we go. Okay. Let's do this. So I'm going to start out with the green one. This is 750 grit or so, somewhere in that neighborhood. Take a look and see how that's looking. I like to use a raking light if I can. That way I can kind of see what the scratch marks actually are looking like. And I think we're at that 750 grit. So let's move up to the gray one. This one's about 1150, I want to say. Julie's got pet wasps. <laughs> That's no fun. 
They broke in. I've been burgled by wasps. Oh man. All right, that probably is good enough on that one. We'll do a little bit with this blue and then this one will be ready for buffing. I'll just set it aside. We'll turn the other half and we'll buff everything together, both of them. And we'll be ready to assemble. So again, I'm gonna go with a fountain pen. Uh, another nice thing about the Junior Series pens is technically they can be a rollerball or a fountain. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can always switch that out. It's just a matter of putting the fountain, you know, screwing the fountain nib in or the rollerball. Everything else is the same. So it's kind of a nice thing. Uh, they're just, that's why I like the Junior kits. They're extremely versatile. Same drill bits and all that, you know. So, all right, now, I just kind of tapped the bushings on my tailstock. Pop off. Nope, oh, that one's already ready. Looky there. And then what I like to do at this point, because there, there might be little shard pieces. I don't know. Whoa, where are we at? There might be some little, you can kind of see, the, the edge is a little bit rough. Like there's little CA bits hanging off there. And if you catch one, you can rip your, you know, like you can crack the finish basically. So you don't want that. And especially you want to get rid of that before you um, assemble the thing. Because if you assemble it like that, then you're definitely going to crack your finish. So what I have here is just a pen mandrel. This is the only use I have for pen mandrels. Just use a regular hole punch, grab some sandpaper, and I put pressure down so that, this, so that the tube is running along this, the shaft. And just kind of give it a little bit of do the twist, you know? That makes sure that you got a nice square end. You got no little bits hanging off that are gonna mess you. Man, I'll tell you what, there is nothing worse and assembling a pen and the finish cracks. <laughs> like you're done with the whole thing, you know, you spend all that time and you're being all careful and doing all, and then you put it together and the, the finish cracks and you're like, I'm just gonna throw something. That's pretty much how you feel. So you got that up to about, I don't know, 1300 grit, something like that, man. This thing is gonna be, once we get it, sorry, I was looking <laughs> I was looking at myself, put it on camera, look at that. Depending on how the light hits everything, man, you get different looks. Plus, this is glow in the dark. What? These are pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside. For now, we'll get the, uh, get the other one set up here in a second. All right, Julie, have a good one. Have a good dinner. Yeah, I don't like wasps. I, uh, I just straight pull the can of wasp killer out and shoot from 10 feet away. We got a pine tree right outside our door that they like to hang out at. So we always have wasp and hornet killer. <laughs> handy you just spray the entire porch down all right so we plug the camera in so that might help make sure that our camera doesn't die in the middle let me get this thing out of the way here and we'll get our other blanks ready now um, there's a little bit of ca glue on these bushings you know, like I, I got a little extra on, on the bushing. So what I'm going to do here, I have this little, I have a little jar full of acetone. There's actually something in there already. What's in there? Oh, a cigar kit. So I got to take those out. Where is my, let's turn the camera where I'm at. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. I have some tweezers. Is that what they're called tweezers hmm. 
Where did my tweezers go? Huh. I don't think these are the ones, but we'll use these. So I'm just going to pull my bushings out here real quick. These are... Doesn't take that long to clean off the acetone or the, the CA glue. The acetone will pretty much clean it up in, you know, a minute or so. So bear with me one second. Ho hopefully I'm on camera. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Sort of. my phone over and I can kind of peek at the chat while I'm doing this. Flamethrower. <laughs> Finish cracking. Yeah, I know. It, it really only takes like one one time when you crack a finish on on a pen now there are other ways to crack a finish when you're assembling you know if, if you're having a really difficult time getting the the part to to go in or if it it's going in at an angle that can cause finish to crack too but you know and and i think a lot of people don't maybe don't even think you know i, I probably i probably cracked a couple and before I really even knew what, what was actually causing it. But yeah, once you, once you kind of think about if there's material hanging off the end and you, you know, you're pressing the part onto it, <clears throat> then you're like, Oh, I gotta, gotta watch out. Gotta watch out a little bit. All right. So we got our jar empty now. So I'm just going to pop those guys in. Like I said, it really only takes a minute, but you can also just leave your bushings in there. It's not going to hurt anything with the acetone. Uh, you don't want to use denatured alcohol. You want acetone for that. It, it is a solvent for CA glue. I don't I don't think de denatured alcohol will will do the job. All right, bring my phone back. Let's see here. I'm I'm missing stuff. So let's see here. Glitch. When you get a chance at the... oh sorry i didn't i didn't get back to you on twitter i don't follow twitter super close <laughs> i'll be honest <laughs> that one kind of falls by the wayside but i'm usually pretty good on on instagram and facebook eventually i get to all right so let's back this guy off a little bit you guys yeah you guys got a view of what's happening here all right, so we got that thing locked and loaded. Let's do a little bit of turning. I'm just gonna take a peek. I think the edge is still fine on this. I think we're good. Okay, so let's get our dust collection system going here. Get up in there. Yeah, I think we're good. Give you guys a little bit of a zoom here. Get that centered a little bit better. There we go. All right. Let's get this pen body done. Fre <laughs> freezes them in place. Oh my goodness. Okay, turn the dust collection on.
so we're looking good so far. Now one thing to also note about this blank specifically, the, the glow powder, that stuff's pretty abrasive stuff as well. So it can kind of dull your tools a little bit faster than normal. So for cutting blades, you know, saw blades. And, you know, especially if you're using high speed steel tools, uh, a lot of times stuff with glow powder in it will just kind of kill the edge right away. How did we have the camera now? This? I think it was like this. I think this was the angle we liked. Zoom you guys in a little bit on this. Oops, this way. Okay. Give it a little spin. We got a couple, another, a couple little pits here and there. Those should be turned out, I think. Even if not, they're pretty minor. It's looking pretty good so far. Frank, what's up, man? tiny pit right there hopefully we'll be clear of other pits and I think I can maybe get that one out because I'm gonna be coming down a little bit more with there let's keep it going here being stubborn.
you didn't see the Madrone blanks yet, Frank? This thing's turned out pretty good. You didn't see, yeah, I didn't die. I didn't do the stabilizing. Um, I, I did that on my own. Here's the, oh, super close up. Here's the, uh, let me, I gotta move this camera thing. There's a big glare. So this was uh, pink and purple. It's looking good though. And we got a little bit of red. Uh, this was blood red. I think uh, Doug picked that one. This is the interference red. I think that's going to look a lot more impressive. It's pretty cool looking, but I think it's really going to pop when we get it turned up and polished. <clears throat> and this one turned out really good. The, the green, um, uh, I guess it was the metal flake, green metal flake. And what else? Oh, and then the, the macro pearl. I think that one's going to look pretty cool too. We had a couple of areas where they're, you know, a little, little kind of, it's a little low, a couple low spots here and there. I'm not sure what they're going to look like on the inside. It's kind of the same issue that we were having with this myoporum. You know, in some cases there may have been areas where the resin really couldn't get to on the inside, uh, cracks on the inside, um, or you know. Again, that may be a case where you might be better off using a, a slow setting resin. It might have a little more time to kind of wiggle its way in um, and, and get onto the inside. Yeah, the green look, it turned out good. I think mainly the, the big thing, uh, the green didn't have any low spots on the outside. That's kind of why I said that that turned out good. But I mean, they all, they, they all look pretty good. Let, so let me stop real quick and look. Still got a tiny little pit right there that I think we can get out. Just about there. I'm gonna take down, it's a little fat. It seems a little f like the fattest right there. I don't like that, but pretty close to, got a little bit to take off on the ends here, but still got that little tiny pit. <laughs> Let's see if we can get rid of that.
All right, let's see what we're looking like. Couldn't get that guy out. So let's do a little bit of filling real quick. It's a really tiny little, little hole there. pick tool. Cracked wood does make some really awesome blanks. Oh no, outside projects, that's no fun. <laughs> it does sound like something from Star Wars, doesn't it? It's annoying, I don't, I don't like listening to it, but. But it does help a lot. with the dust. Still got a little bit of a bump on that end. So I'm actually, I'm gonna come in here and kind of nibble at this. We got a tiny, tiny pinhole. I think this round ought to fix that. There we go. It's almost like I've done this before. Leads to the reactor core. <laughs> when you start to see brass stuff, I like that. Womp rats. Oh man. All right. How'd we do? There we go. We got that thing taken care of. All right, let's do a little sanding. Starting again with 180. That'll just make this sanding, getting it smooth, go a lot faster. So I got a little bit of a funkiness going on on the, on the right side here. Nibbled away, you can see kind of a dark line down there. So I'm gonna bring this in. A little bit.
I don't want any funkiness, you know? Let's see what we got going on here now. Go back to the 180 grit. Where'd that go? Lost my sandpaper. Here it is. Let's see if we can get this to, to even out down at the end here. The 180 grit smoother. not the best shaping job I've ever done on a pen, but it ain't bad. It'll do. All right, I think we got it nice and smooth now. No tool marks. Let's move up to the 240 grit. John's back. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a CA finish on top. I won't even have to worry about it. We're at 240 grit right now. We'll do 400 and a little bit of 600, and then we'll put a CA finish on this guy. And we'll be ready to rock and roll. I can't wait to see this thing put together. All right, 400. I'm gonna get a new piece of 400. One seems old. I don't want any old 400 grit sandpaper. Some deeper scratches in there that I, I'm not digging. I'm gonna drop back down to 400. See if I can't get those out. Best way to know if you're if you've sanded enough with one grid is to to sand the opposite direction like this, and then switch back to radial. You know that way. Once all the sideways scratches are out, you know you can move on. Or in this case, once all the radial scratches are done. And I know that I've done my job with this grit. All right, so we'll switch back to the 600 radial.
think we are good. <laughs> Somebody always gives it a thumb down. Uh, there's a lot of people that don't understand that live streams are long form and they, they just really don't like it. So that's fine. At least they're voting, you know? Some people are probably just like, ha, I'm gonna do a thumbs down. Just to be silly. All right, I need to clean out my sandpaper stores over here. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna wipe it down with a little denatured alcohol and then we'll start applying the CA finish. Or they just don't like me and that's fine. I'm, I'm cool with that too. All right, denatured alcohol, let's turn this thing off. I'm sick of listening to it. Maybe they're just sick of listening to the dust collector, which I give that a thumbs down myself. Oh yeah. So again, I painted the, the inside of the blank uh, black. So that's helping, you know, once we get it polished, that'll help pop the, the uh, 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 color shift powder in it. Oh, I guess I probably could have zoomed that out a little bit. Anyway, but there's going to be some depth in this. I can already see it, actually. So I, I really can't wait to get this thing totally polished up because I think this is going to be a pretty nice-looking pen. Pretty nice. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It all counts as a view. That's true. Is it still focused on the banjo? I don't think so. I think we're good now. I think we're good. All right, so pull out our CA. Start applying it. And again, I kind of let the first one just soak in and, you know, in, in some cases, certain materials, I'll use the thin, the super thin from Starbond and let that really soak in if there's areas that, I don't know, if it's like a kind of a weird material or something where it could soak in, I might do that first to kind of seal everything off. In this case, everything's, it's a pretty solid surface. There's nothing, there's nowhere for the CA to go. It's stabilized wood. So, you know, just, but I like to kind of let it, if there is anything to soak into, let it kind of just cure on its own on the first, then go with the the accelerator after that. Prize fighter? No. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't. I think the, the problem with live streams is I think people, especially when I first started doing this, they were used to just videos. They're like, YouTube is videos. What are you doing three hours worth of, you know, whatever. But then I think once you explain what's going on, uh, like, like I think what they, they think that I like shot it as a video and was just so lazy. <laughs> like that was like what I meant to do was like shoot that. And, and I don't think they understand that it, it was, it was just shot live. You know, I was doing the thing while people watched. And I think a lot of times once people understand that, they're like, oh, okay, I get it. And I'm like, yeah, so if you don't want to watch a three-hour video replay, don't, don't click on the replay, I, you know, the ones that say replay in the title. I thought that might be a good way to differentiate them. And I totally understand. I don't, you know, I can't watch three-hour-long things every day either. <clears throat> Because I'm making three-hour-long things every day. <laughs> no, not every day. When I can, when I can. Uh, yeah, so I did use a black tube. It just, that's, I'm doubling, it, just in case there's there was an area that 
I, so I, initially I painted the inside of the tube, or I'm sorry, the inside of the blank. I always get those two mixed up. So I painted that black, and then I also did use black tubes just in case, you know, there was like one little area where there's like a little pinhole and, and you would see brass. I'd rather just use black. That way it's, you're covered. You got, you got all bases covered. It's just, there's just been too many times where if you're going to spend the time painting the inside of the blank, like why go for brass tubes, you know, take the extra step and paint the tube or I just use the, the powder coated ones or nickel plated ones. That way it'll, it just won't show up. It's just brass just shows up so easily through stuff that it's better just to not have that behind it. All right. So I have no clue how many coats I just did, but somewhere around four or five, I think. We'll hit it with the accelerator, we'll sand, and then we'll put on two or three more coats. And we'll be ready to start polishing this guy up. Belt and suspenders kind of guy. Yeah, you know, the live streams are cool because it's two things. Like, it, it kind of gives people a place to just hang out, you know? You guys can come chat. Um, I go in depth. Um, the big thing for me was it, it allows me to just go in depth instead of having to like, you know, a lot of videos you're, you're, you're just kind of going through the motions kind of quick and can't really explain everything that's going on. So I like the streams. I think they're pretty fun. Just depends on what you want. Oh, I already had a piece of 400 grit. All right, Let's see how we're doing. Yeah, a little bit more ridges on this one, I think. Yeah, didn't go on as smooth as that first one. That last one, I got it on pretty smooth. a little bit more we'll get everything nice and get these ridges out of the way we'll be ready to rock and roll here all right put on about three more coats and I think we'll be good to go Good to go. So, have to wipe that off with the back of the paper and blow it off just to make sure there's no more paper towel dust stuff on it. Okay, coat number one. Let's just bring the trash can over to me instead of having to walk over to it every time. I think you guys are talking about different paints and stuff. Um, what I use, and I got this, it's brilliant. I got it from uh, OJ, from o OJ Woodworking Crafts. Um, he just uses spray paint. He sprays it into a cup and then uses a paintbrush. And it is by far the easiest, best method I've found. Um, and it's thin, so it typically doesn't, you know, it's not like it's changing the dimensions of the hole, because I know that can happen. Um, that always happened to me when I used acrylic paint. Um, I didn't, I didn't like that too much. I think this probably the second best that I've seen is is like the model paint. Again, because they're usually pretty thin. But I find that the what I use is the Home Depot, the two X whatever is it Krylon. I don't know, whatever Home Depot sells. Rust Rustoleum two X. Um, and it's the paint and primer. 
So to me, I don't know. It just seems like that works a little bit better to, to stick to plastic. So that's, that's what I used. But I, I use a good, a really good paintbrush also. Um, you know, meant, meant to be used with like solvents and all that stuff. Like an artist brush. It, it definitely helps to apply it that way. All right, so I think this is the last coat. I'm going to call it good because I think we got lots of CA glue on there at this point. <clears throat> All right. CA with wood, epoxy with resin. Huh. I actually used epoxy. I usually uh, I, I usually use CA to, to glue tubes in, but I'm I'm also usually doing acrylics um, only or stabilized wood. But on these, I actually used epoxy. I thought I'd, I'd try it again and see how it worked. Uh, it seemed to work okay. I don't know. Still kind of like my CA method. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this thing's going to look awesome. I'm excited, guys. Daryl's here. What's up, man? I actually find, uh, like, so for, for these, I, I don't, you know, if it's a painted tube, you can't scuff it up. I could have probably with these, but I actually find that if you just wipe the, the tube off, I hit it with a little bit of denatured alcohol to make sure there's no nothing funky on there. Um, I actually find that works just fine. I, I don't know. I don't know that scuffing is super important. Because a lot of times you just can't, and I haven't really seen, I don't get blowouts ever, so I'm not, sh I'm not sure about scuffing. I get that it's good to give it something to bite into, it's just like resin, so it can't hurt anything, but at the same time I don't know that it's super critical. I think what's more critical is making sure you get glue on all the surfaces, that, that's what you need. All right, that's flattened down. Let's move to wet sanding. However, like I always say, if you're getting good results, don't change what you're doing. <laughs> no reason to change something if you, if you, if it works. If it works, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what they say. All right, so. Do a little bit of the green paper, do a little bit of gray, a little bit of blue, and then we'll do some buffing. Hey Grant, how's it going? Down in Australia, nice. So you're moving into, let's see, we're going into summer soon, and so you must be going into winter down there. I don't know. I I used to really like summer. I'm kind of like, I don't know. I'd rather just have winter all year, <laughs> almost. Maybe not winter. I don't know. It, just, it gets hot in the shop, so... I'd be a lot more excited about summer if, if our apartment wasn't super hot and if the shop wasn't super hot, which is what 90% of my time is spent at. If I could just sit on the lake all day, I would give me some 95 degree days all summer. Trim the blanks with your razor sharp wit. <laughs> oh, nice. That's what I'm talking about right there. Okay, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to take a peek, see what my scratch marks are looking like. They're looking good, I think, so 
Let's turn that off. I need the gray paper. Do a little bit of gray polishing. Yeah, well, it's funny, and like like I said, it depends on your experience because what what happened to me was I was getting terrible results using epoxy, <laughs> and so I was like, okay, let me try something else, and so I, I switched to um, CA, and and I don't know, like I I can't say that it's better or anything, but ever since I switched to, and and I also did things a little bit differently. I, I put thin CA on the inside of the blank and and thick on the tube and I spread it into the, you know, apply it to it. I don't just put a like squirt a line on the tube and then roll it around. I like actually apply it everywhere inside and, and on the tube. And ever since I started doing that, I've, I haven't, honestly, I don't think I've had a blowout ever since then, not one on a pen. So, you know, that's one of those things where you, you can't really argue with the results. And so it's funny hearing, you know, I was having trouble with CA and it's funny, it's just it's each person's experience is different. So whatever works, is that's what I always say. If it's working, if you haven't got a blowout since you switched to whatever method or, you know, however it works, then just stick with it. Keep it going. Keep it rolling. Very depressing there, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly what I did with epoxy, Billy. <laughs> and there was a big gap of, there was no glue on it. So, I, you know, it doesn't really matter which way you, you do it. Uh, you, whatever you do, you need to make sure. Now, one thing that I also don't know if I did or not, at this point, I, I won't turn anything for 20, like, until the next day. So I, I, I glue the tubes in and, and I set them aside and I don't touch it. And I think that also has something to do with success rates. Um, I think if you try and turn it right away, I think you're you're probably in for some trouble. Give it time to cure up fully, and and you'll you'll get better. You'll have less problems. Give it a little tap. Both of them came out. All right, so let's get our only reason to use a pen mandrel. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I think that'll make things easier. Now on the other hand, I am very convinced that pen mandrels are just worthless. I think that everybody's going to get better results turning between centers. That's my opinion, but I would always recommend people do that. And use your pen mandrel to square up the ends here like this and get rid of extra CA glue. Okay. So... I dropped those guys, the, the bushings, into my uh, acetone. Let's get our buffing wheels set up over here. We got two blanks to buff. Spin you guys. Oh, I'm caught on cords again, sorry. I'll just kind of spin you guys around here. You can kind of see what I'm doing over there. <clears throat> get my mask on so we're going to start with the tripoli wheel t-r-i-p-o-l-y it's a buffing rouge uh, not the the waxy uh, polished stuff gritty wax uh, the buffing rouge tri tripoli and then the next one is the white diamond and then we'll go back to the other one and set up the the buffing wheel for car car polish all right, 
this thing set up right. Like I said, the, the big thing that I'm waiting for, I want to see how these things look uh, glow in the dark. One of the tough things with glow in the dark blanks is a lot of times they look terrible during the day, which uh, is, is tough because you're not going to be looking at most things. Oh, whoops, where's my... You know, that's, that's what you're going to be looking at most of the time. It's just only, you know, when it's dark, the glow part comes out so it's really kind of disappointing that you know when it looks terrible during the day but I actually think this is gonna look pretty awesome during the day it's looking good so far so now in this case I'm just hoping that the that the glow pops so we'll, we'll shut the lights out and we'll give it a, a run See what it looks like when we get it all done. All right, and then white diamond. Uh, that that wood really darkened up, uh, like it's it's much richer red with the finish on. So here's the first one. Let me get behind the camera so I can see what I'm doing. I don't really have good lighting right here, but. I mean, that's not very good lighting at all. I'll have to show you in a second. I'll just leave the camera right there for now. It's looking good, though. Trust me. All right, so the cap. Ooh. Man, the, the, the wood is really that dyed wood. It's, it's interesting because dye stabilized wood, a lot of times until you get it, you know, like, fin like a finish on top of it, like really polished up, it kind of looks a little dull, you know. Man, you put some finish on top and it's really, it's popping. It's looking good. So don't be too disappointed if you dye stabilize something and it kind of looks like meh you know, off the bat, that may not, it's probably not very indicative of what it's really going to look like in the end. May just be surprised. All right. <clears throat> and you may be thinking, why doesn't he just stick it on the, the stick thing? in the first place and I don't know it just doing it the way that I do works for me so so I keep doing it if it ain't broke
All right, so final step is car polish on the buffing wheel. Okay. I'm going to switch turn I'm going to flip this thing around here. And I can get you we have better lighting over here so I can give you a shot of what this thing's looking like. It's looking good. Let's just say that. I'm just going to angle that down for a sec. Man, look at that. What? It's so shiny that I can't get a good shot of it. There we go. Look at that. Oh, I'm losing the focus. I don't know. This one's going to be a very tough one to get... Um, to really show how this thing looks <laughs> in real life. Even on video, it's gonna be kind of tough. But see see how much depth we got here? Nope. Got lots of depth in there. It's kind of spacey looking, I don't know. All right, so, and it's, I mean, I gotta be honest, we, I could stop right now. It's, it's very shiny, but let's, uh, Let's hook up our, our other buffing wheel. So I have this other string buff. And it's a super soft wheel. So it matches with the, you know, a super high grit or low abrasive. Uh, let's see. So it's kind of a little bit of a different type of wheel, uh, but it's very soft, good for for use with high polish. And I'm going to be using Meguiar's. Oh, I guess you guys can barely see what I was just doing there. I don't really have it aimed there. So there's my string buff. And then Meguiar's 105. It's been working fine for me. Um, I think what you know, I don't I don't know that it's that important which polish you use necessarily. Probably use plastic polish would work pr pretty good, I think, for this. And I'm just going to apply a little bit. I'm finding that I don't think you need to put as that too much of. I don't think you need to use too much of this stuff. Let me let me shake it up first. Yeah, I do. I got a UV light. We'll we'll charge it up and we'll see what's going on once we get it together. All right, so let's get this piece ready. So I just put a little bit. I'm just, I'm like I said, I, I'm finding that I think that I, I put too much on a lot of times, and it just doesn't need it. Not, not that much. So we'll just do a little bit there, and this thing at about 1,300 or so. Just lightly polish that off. Flip flop it. Whew. Shiny. And I'm actually not even going to add more. We're just going to go with it. Okay. cell phone just went off and it ain't mine who's in my shop that was weird huh. hello 
I'm being burgled, guys. Somebody's sneaking into my shop. Okay, so I don't know what that cell phone no noise was, but we are going to bring the camera over to the... Oh, I got to switch it over, guys. Oh. Got to switch over the assembly machine. All right, so let's see here. I'm not a pen turner. I'm I'm definitely a pen turner. <laughs> Chicken wings and tater skin. You can't eat and watch. Oh man. I know you need you need sunglasses with this stuff. All right, so let's get this thing ready to go here. Get that thing out of the way. So, I have just a little wooden wooden thing that we use to cinch stuff down. I'm going to need to bring the table up, I think. That ought to be good. And then I like to put a little piece of wood down here. All right, so let me get some gloves on. And I'll show you the kit. So it's called a Junior Morgan. I don't know. I don't think I've ever used it before, but it does look pretty good. I don't know where I'd put it. There it is. I'll just kind of show you the components real quick and then punch everything together. So, here's the cap, or the whatever, clip and finial thing. It's kind of an interesting kit. I don't know. That's that part, and what else we got in here? So it's a fountain pen kit. I'm not going to show you the end part. I'll show you the, the nib here. Pretty interesting looking kit. I don't know. It's got... Not too bad looking, huh? Caught my eye. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get our parts ready here and get ready to rock and roll. Junior Morgan. So like I said, I, I can't remember. I don't know if, if Turner's Warehouse carries this. I don't know where I got it. So we'll have to just kind of see. I'm going to have to bring this table up even further. I want to make sure these parts don't fall off of here. Okay, where's my blanks? So now I'll look for my marks. Hmm. There's my there's one mark. And there's the other mark, I think. I think I wore down a little bit, but yeah, okay. So let me let me just line these things up the way that I think that these marks are showing me. Oh yeah, okay. That'll look good. Nope, I got a couple of funky spots on this. Did I screw up the finish on this? Or is it just the? Hold, hold on, hold on a second, guys. There's a couple of. A couple spots on this thing. I don't know if I can show you or not. See that line right there? I don't know what's going on with that. So I'm going to go back over to the, the buffing wheel before I assemble this thing because I'm going to have to just take it right apart if I don't fix it. Where did that go?
Okay, and then back to this one real quick, and then then we'll be good. All right. It's always a good idea to really give it a good inspection before you go to put something together, because <laughs> you don't want to have to take it right apart or find out later that you screwed something up. All right, so let's see here. I guess we'll just go for the, put the, this piece in first. So this is the nib piece. I really could bring this table up even further here. Oh. Ugh. Take this thing out of the way. Okay. Here we go. It's a little easier with the table up closer. Just want to make sure I got that. Okay. Now I'm going to put this together. I'm I, I used to I used to put the part the the nib and then the center connector together and then try and press everything all at once. And I'm I'm done doing that because I've had too many um, pr issues problems. A lot of times you end up pressing out this. Let me get behind the camera to make sure. You end up pressing I don't know putting pressure on this little plastic thing for the threads. And so I, I just, I don't do that anymore because it just, it just doesn't work. So I kind of remember, I didn't really do that correctly, but for the most part, I remember what I was doing, how, how this thing looked. And so this is how I want it. <clears throat> that down in okay oh that does look pretty good this is a nice looking kit i like it okay so let's put this together and see see what we're looking like here there we go Okay, that'll tell me. Now I can look and see where do I want my clip. I need to angle the camera down a little bit. I'll let you guys kind of look with me as I figure out what I want to do here. So this is how it's gonna. This is how it's gonna be. It's gonna be kind of hard because it's so reflective. I like to just kind of look at it and see. Which direction do I want this thing? I think I want it like right there. I think that'll look good. Okay. Get the camera angled. <laughs> Where's my camera crew? All right. This is a pretty nice looking kit. Junior Morgan. Fancy. Okay, we got the cap done. Let's press in the end part. And we'll just put our nib on. Oh, actually, one thing. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> so, this is the worst. I'll put it by, by the camera. Isn't that the worst? Who wants to listen to that? Nobody. Okay, so the way to fix that, grab a little bit of 
paste wax. I mean, you can even you can even literally just rub rub a candle on that or something. Do something to to kind of lubricate those those threads. Let's see, where's my my Renaissance wax? So I'm just going to take a little bit of Renaissance wax. Don't even need a lot, just a, a tiny, tiny bit. And what I'm going to do here is just put a little bit on our thread. Oh, man, this camera's way high. Let's put it, whoa, whoa. Put it down like that. So, where, and now I lost where my wax was. Hmm. Let me get some more wax here. Okay, so just a tiny bit, and then I'm just going to, hopefully the camera will focus here. I'm just going to kind of put them around the, the threads here. You don't need to, I don't want to get it all over the place. Just add a little bit, no big deal. Tiny bit of wax. And then now, well, yeah, there we go. Once you get it, once you get it rubbed in. I'm going to put a little bit more wax on there. I don't know if I, if I got a whole lot. It's kind of hard to see. Just double check, make sure that I've gotten the, gotten those threads waxed. One, one of the problems is this, this can is so, I need to get a new can or, or melt this and put it in a shorter can. I can't get down in there. Just put a little bit there. And then, yeah, there we go. No more squeaks. Nobody wants squeaks. I'm even going to do that to the bottom. So the end part, same deal. I'm going to put some on these threads. Most people don't take apart the bottom part, but even still, if anyone did. I can't tell where the wax is really tough to, to wax something if you can't see the wax. All right. Okay, that ought to be good. Oh yeah, I can see the wax. Too much wax. Oh, I lost the thing. Where'd it go? Huh. I totally lost the piece, guys. That sucks. I hope it didn't go in this little hole. Better idea. Do that over a tabletop. Do you see how small that little piece was? Jeez. Huh. Seriously? Can you, <laughs> can you guys see what I'm doing down here? Totally dropped it in the drill press down <laughs> somewhere. <sighs> ah, I found it. Found it. <sighs> okay. That was scary. All right. Does it squeak? Nope. It doesn't squeak. Okay. So we got our pen. Let's see here. There we go. That uh, color shift powder is really popping. Let me let me look at this thing under under the light over here. So <laughs> I haven't even looked at it yet, guys. Ooh, that's a pretty nice looking pen. Let me let me get you guys kind of over here where where we're in the the light again. Put the pen down so I don't drop it while I'm moving the camera head. So I find that if I drop it that way, it's a good, oh, got some polish on the thing. Let me, uh, let me grab a towel so I can kind of wipe this thing down and I'll give you guys a good shot. All right. There we go. Wow. It's really hard to not get it shiny. It's 
tell you what, Gretchen's going to really hate me because getting pictures of this is going to be impossible. I like the kit. Not too bad. Hey, there I am. Okay, so now we need to check out the glow in the dark part. Let's see how this thing glows. So we got to turn the lights out. I'm going to bring the camera over kind of to the middle of the shop here. So bear with me for one sec here while I kind of get things rearranged. You get to go on a tour. Here we go. Oh, we're stuck. Here we go. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna put it over here. This usually seems to be a good spot. Okay, so first thing I'm, I'm going to pull out the, uh, I got a UV light, that'll charge it up. I don't think it really matters what wavelength or any of that kind of stuff. But I got to turn out, let me turn out some lights over here real quick. Or I forget to turn them off. Okay, so I have a little torch light here. We're going to charge up this stuff. And you can kind of see it, you know, a little bit with the UV light. So we'll just kind of leave that sitting right there. Let me go turn out the lights. Shoot, the camera, the, hopefully the, the monitors won't be too much of a problem. That's pretty cool. Oh my gosh. Let me turn my monitors off because I think it's actually making it worse. There we go. So with this glow powder, you can like just charge it in sunlight and, uh, and it should glow for, for many hours. This stuff is like pretty, pretty bright. <clears throat> I know it's probably not the most amazing thing on this, this camera, but it is pretty darn cool. I don't think I put a ton of glow powder in these. So, you know, it may not be as bright as some of my other glow in the dark things that I've made, but not bad. Definitely glowing. All right. Turn the lights back on. Halloween's over. There we go. We're back. Jamie, what's up, buddy? Glad you could make it. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this thing. It turned out pretty good. I'm happy with this kit, uh, the Junior Morgan. I, not not a bad kit if you run across it. Uh, not too bad looking. But yeah, so the tough thing is trying to get these things to look good during the day with glow powder in them and then also look good with glow powder. So a lot of times you'll end up kind of either putting less glow powder in so it may not glow as much at, you know at, in the dark. It may not be as bright in the dark. Um, but you know, like, like if you put some sort of powders in there with this one, I think I went a little bit light on the powder, probably could have added a little bit more, um, and it would be a little brighter, but, um, 
because we use the the blue to purple color shift powder though and then i uh, what we use like the, the the recipe for what for what the resin stuff is uh it was ocean blue just like a tiny drop of ocean blue uh, alumalite dye we added some blue to purple color shift powder and then the starlight glitter stuff and then uh, glow in the dark powder and so it looks good during the day uh, because of that uh, blue to purple color shift powder but it looks really good you know uh, glowing so pretty happy with this thing so i'll have uh, i need to get pictures of the myoporum blanks uh, but i'll have those guys up on my website uh, we have i don't have them here so i can't remember exactly i think i want to say that there's probably um what do we do I think we made a batch of six. I don't know. You'll see when I, I'll post and I'll let you guys know how many, but there's, there's some of them are the, the blue to purple color shift powder. We might've done, dang, I can't remember what we did now. How did we, I, anybody remember how we made these? I can't remember. Um, the other blanks that I have that I know for sure are the, we did some with uh, glitters in them so i can't remember how many of each but uh but we got quite a few myoporum blanks uh that will be up for grabs in my my website store eventually so let me stop real quick <laughs> you need glow in the dark now yeah i know yeah you can totally use it in, in power outages that's true yeah people working the night shift that's true yeah. It is a good pen for people working the night shift. Probably not a good pen for burglars working at night. Uh, it'll, it'll tip people off. Oh, you turned the golf tee blank. I can't wait to see that. That's sweet. Froze your tablet. Oh, no. Sweet. Okay. I can't wait to see that. Cool. Yeah, and you don't necessarily need the ocean blue. Another way to go, uh, if, if you have the alumalite blue dye, um, just use like a pin prick, literally, and that'll give you pretty much the same coloring as the ocean blue. Um, ocean blue is just, it seems like it's just kind of a, a, a thinned, thinned out version of their blue. So you can get pretty much the same, same kind of color. So glow in the dark ink. I, do they make that? That'd be cool. I've never seen that. It's invisible. Yeah, so I use I use the blurp bowl that's it's on. The, so the the blue to purple color shift powder is on my website. I'll I'll try and put a link uh, in the in the de definitely in the the show notes later, uh, and then one in the well I can go get one right now for you guys if anybody wants to grab some. I won't be lazy. I'll, I'll go I'll go get you guys a link. <laughs> I wish it was envywoodworks.com. So I need to make a, a link that's just slash blurple. Let's see what, what comes up here. Nope, that didn't work. Hold on, hold on. There we go, found it. All right, so the, the color shift powder is this. I sell it on my website. Works pretty good. Um, again, the way color shift powder works, though, it's like interference powders. These are all kind of the same thing. They really, if you really want to have like striking effects, and, and have have it really like pop out at you you have to have a dark background so that's again why i painted the the inside of the blank black i wanted to make sure that it had a nice dark background so it would kind of reflect it's kind of weird it it, it and, and then it, it changes from blue to purple depending on how you're holding it now this i'm trying to see it's not it, it it's a little bit more muted because we added blue um you know dye to the resin so it's not as you know, flash bang in your face with the blue and purple, but it, it definitely does kind of show up depending on how the light hits it. Purples pop out at you a little bit here and there. So anyway, I had fun turning that thing up. So again, uh, one other tip, if you're going to be uh, drilling these, you know, blanks like this, where you got wood doing weird stuff and resin, um, I really definitely, after using those, I, I bought the Fuller is, is the brand. Uh, brad point bits and if you're going to be drilling out and really drilling out anything but especially for pen blanks if you're drilling hybrids with wood kind of being all weird in there um, you know at an angle basically compared to the blank get a, a brad point bit and and 
get a good brad point bit those fuller bits are good they have them on craft supplies usa i was actually talking to chad about this and he's going to try and start carrying them as well at turner's warehouse but do yourself a favor you'll get that drill hole perfect everything will be good and uh everything will go good from there on you know a lot of it does start with the, the drill hole if you if you end up like a regular twist bit ends up wandering and so your your holes oversize and that's the first step in getting a bad glue bond on your your tube and everything just kind of can go downhill from there so <laughs> go get a a brad point bit a good one and and you'll you'll i think you'll find the results are a lot better where'd my mouse go there it is sorry i was looking for my mouse while i was talking anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the stream tonight and uh i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the evening although it's getting kind of late so let's see on wednesday we'll probably turn the and it'll probably be a little bit faster than this one that took a little while uh, but i think we'll turn up this and i gotta be uh, <laughs> so i think we're gonna turn this one up now i think what's happening I don't know. It's it's all sticky. There's stuff all over it. And I think that I didn't actually get that UV resin fully cured because it just keeps like dripping stuff out all over the place. It's sticky. But I think the top hopefully will be okay. But I want to turn this just into like a little kind of a, a paperweight type thing. Just kind of dome it over, uh, cut it off and see how this thing looks. So I think we'll turn that up on Wednesday. Should be pretty fast. Uh, I don't think it's going to be very hard. Hopefully it's not going to drip all over the place and get sticky stuff flying, flinging in my face. Uh, but yeah, so probably around three o'clock or so in the afternoon on Wednesday, we'll turn that up. Uh, but I hope you guys have a great evening. And uh, again, thanks for joining the fun tonight. And let me, before I go, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. So try Noodler's Blue Ghost. Oh, nice. Blue Ghost ink glows under UV. Nice. Oh, but it's otherwise invisible in the daylight? Well, that doesn't help too much, but that's kind of cool. I want to try that out. Yeah, fish is good too, uh, but I would recommend, I, I wouldn't recommend a fish bit. I would actually go for a uh, Brad Point bit, a real Brad Point bit, the, the fuller. Um, but you're, you're absolutely right. I have tried some of the fuller bit or the, the fish bits. And those things work really well for, for resin blanks, acrylics and stuff. That's a, that's a good choice. I don't know that they're super that much better for resin necessarily than your, your kind of like a decent, you know, twist bit. But um, if, you're, if you're doing something that has wood like this, I would, I would recommend going for the, the full, um, fuller, but uh, for, the, um, for a brad point. Um, the fuller, let me, let me get it out again for you guys. Let me pull those out. They, they are, this is a serious drill bit. And I mean, it, it wandered zero. <laughs> like there was nothing. It's got a good brad point, a good um, serious brad point on the end. I mean, look at that. That, that is, that's serious right there. Like, like it didn't wander at all. The hole was perfect. So I really highly recommend if you're going to be doing something with wood being all kind of sideways in your blank like this, especially harder, denser woods, um, get these ones, Fuller Brad Point bits. They have them on craft supplies right now. And then hopefully Brad, uh, Chad will, will have those also on Turner's Warehouse down the road. Uh, but he doesn't right now. So um, craft supplies is where I got mine. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a wonderful evening now. I will sign off. I'll let you get back to your lives. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys all on Wednesday. Well, hopefully all of you on uh, Wednesday. We'll turn up something else. Have a good one, guys.